Hi everybody! After doing my last video where I shared some journals that I made using this paper collection, I shared the little tiny bag that I made and a couple of my subscribers asked for a tutorial on how to make the bag. So I am going to show you how I made this little tiny beach tote and you can make one yourself. So this is the one that I made previously. I'm gonna show you this one here and how I made it. So it's made the exact same way, but it just doesn't have all the embellishments on it. So I'm gonna show you how to make the base of the bag and then you can do as much as you want with it on your own. So stay tuned and I'll show you step-by-step step how to create this on your own. To make this, you will need two 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock and you will need four brads. You'll need a cutting mat, a scoreboard, a ruler, a bone folder, glue or double-sided tape, scissors, and a piercing tool. So go ahead and grab your supplies and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is get our sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. In my project, I'm going to use a double-sided cardstock. It is decorative. You can use plain cardstock too. But if you're going to use plain cardstock for the base and then add decorative papers later, it is most helpful to cut all of the papers before you assemble. The decorative papers would be about an eighth of an inch smaller than the cardstock base if you're going to use two layers. But for me, I'm just going to use the one layer. So I'm going to take my 12 by 12 piece and I'm going to cut one strip that is five inches by 12 inches. Next, I'm going to cut this strip in half to make two pieces that are five inches by six inches. I'm gonna set aside my cutter and scoring board for just a minute and I'm going to work on these two pieces. So for this next step, we will need a pencil and a ruler and we are going to mark along the bottom. So the pieces are going to be six inches across the bottom and top and five inches across the sides. So on each side along the bottom, I'm going to, I have a centering ruler, so I'm going to just center this and I'm going to mark five eighths of an inch in on each side. If you don't have a centering ruler, obviously you can just use the ruler regularly and mark five eighths inch in and five eighths of an inch in. And now we're going to draw a line from the top corner to this bottom line that we just made. We're going to repeat on the second piece and do the same thing. And next, we're going to cut this piece off. This is going to give us that tapered look to our bag where the top is a little bit bigger than the bottom. We're going to set these two pieces aside for just a minute. I'm going to bring the cutting mat back in and our piece of cardstock. We're going to cut one strip two and a half inches by 12 inches. We're going to score this strip at one quarter an inch, one and a quarter inch, 
and two and a quarter inch. Next, we're going to cut this into two pieces. So we're gonna cut it in the middle to make two pieces that are six inches by two and a half inches. I'm going to pre-fold my score lines just to make it a little bit easier for later. And I'm going to take my scoreboard and score one side at one inch. The same thing on the second piece. And now on the side where the one inch score line is, I'm going to cut this middle line from the bottom up to that one inch score line. Then I'm gonna cut this little tiny rectangle completely off. I'm going to slightly angle the sides same thing on the other side. So I'm left with this piece here that has those two flaps at the bottom. These sides I'm also going to slightly angle so that whenever I glue them on later, it won't show. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on this next one, cutting up to the score line and cutting each of these tabs off. And cutting these at an angle. So now I have my two strips. These will be my side panels and the tabs will be where we glue them on to the front and the back pieces. You can use double-sided tape or you can use glue when you're putting the pieces together, whichever you prefer. I am actually going to use both. I'm going to use glue for these tabs and I'm going to put tape on these ones. So I'm going to pre-tape them. Now I'm going to use my half-inch double-sided tape to make this easier. Now I'm going to bring in my front and back pieces. They are both the same size, so it doesn't matter which one you use for which. I'm going to start with one of the side pieces. I'm going to place glue just along this tab and I'm going to glue it like this to the front of the bag. I want to make sure that I'm lining up the corners so that they are really nice and neat. This will make the bag a lot neater once it's done. Once I have it positioned, I like to lay it flat and then position it to make sure it's exactly where I want it. Make sure that when it folds over, 
there isn't any sticking up from the front. So there's the first section. And then the second one you are going to take and put on this side. And this is what the piece will look like with the front panel and then each of the side panels glued together. Next, we are going to flip it over and we're going to glue the back panel on. So we're going to glue the back panel just like we did to the front panel. So you can flip it over or you can do it this way. You can fold it and do it. I'm gonna just do it this way. Putting glue on my tab. Make sure that when you do this, your bag is the right direction. So the six inch side is top, five inch side is bottom. Now we should have the base of our bag. These side pieces here we will fold in so that our bag will sit like this. Set this piece to the side. Grab your cutting board and the piece of cardstock. This time we are going to cut base of the of the bag out of this piece. So what we are going to do is cut a piece that is three inches by five and three quarter inches. And then we're going to score this piece along the three inch side at one half inch and two and a half inches to make half inch tabs. Next, we are going to use our ruler and mark the center of each side. Okay. 
and then we are going to mark each end from the top and the bottom at a half inch in. So I'm going to start above the half inch tab and I'm going to put a mark at one half inch. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side at one half inch and I'm going to repeat at the top one half inch from the right and one half inch from the left. Now I'm going to draw a line from each of these dots to the center. Next, I'm going to cut each of these pieces off. Since my paper is double sided, I'm going to flip it over so that the bottom of my bag actually matches the outside of my bag. So I'm going to fold along each of these lines. and open them up. This is going to be the base of the bag. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take my bag and position it over the tabs to get it to line up to make sure it's the right size. And if you measured everything carefully, it should be. You'll have to push on the sides a little bit to get them to come out to the points on the base, but once they are glued, they will hold themselves. So since my bag is the right size, you can also turn it over like this and put each of the tabs down in. And then when you push the sides out, they will match up to the points. So I am going to put glue on one of the tabs. And place inside the bag. If you want to use double-sided tape here, it will be a lot easier to assemble because you won't have to wait for glue to dry. It will stick as soon as you put it together. You just wanna make sure that everything is lined up even with that score line so that your bag sits nice and flat whenever it's done. I'm going to add glue to the other tab. And position it onto the bag. real careful mine just moved so I'm going to try to make sure that I get it to move down so that it's nice and flat
And now I have the sides of the bag. I just need to work next on the corner pieces. So I have already put my double-sided tape on. It'll be a little bit easier for me to adhere those ones. So I'm going to remove the double-sided tape and I'm going to stick these down. And now we have our bag. So mine is just a little tiny bit uneven here. If you want, you can go in with a pair of scissors and very slightly, I can't even get it barely, it's so small, just slightly trim off that little tiny excess so that it is flush with the bag. So that is the base of the bag. If you are making this out of plain cardstock and decorative cardstock afterwards, it's easier to place the layers on before you actually assemble everything so that once you get to this step, all of the papers are on the bag. The next step is to cut some of the handles. So you're going to need two 12 inch strips and you can make them as wide or as narrow as you choose. For my bags, I like to do some decorative stitching with my sewing machine. So I am going to cut my handles 12 inches by two inches and I'm going to score them at a half inch on each side and I'm going to turn them and they're gonna end up being one inch wide but there's gonna be a zigzag stitch along the center. So I am going to do that and then I will be right back. For this next step, I have my two handles and I have four brads that I'm going to use. I think the brads just make it stronger. You can glue these on, but if you're putting anything with some weight in the bag, they can potentially come loose. So I like to kind of shape my handles a little bit. I just take my bone folder and just slightly curve them. I feel like it's a little easier to work with them that way. And then I am going to put my handles, I'm going to mark mine. About an inch and a half in. So I'm going to mark an inch and a half and an inch and a half. So my handles, I will be putting them on the inside, but they are going to be, the ends of this are going to be at the inch and a half. I can place them closer together if I want, 
but I want mine to be a little bit wider set. So what I'm gonna do is take my piercing tool and I am going to line this up in the bag. The handle is gonna go on the back of the bag, but I'm gonna do it on the front just while I poke my hole because I wanna make sure they have enough on the front. So I'm gonna line it up with that mark that I made and then I am going to pierce a hole through all of those layers. And then I'm going to take my brad and place it through the layers. So I have the first side attached and I'm gonna repeat with the second one, lining it up. So I have my first handle. I'm going to turn the bag over and I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. I'm going to mark it first at one and a half. Now I have my handles on my bag. If you want, you can shape them a little bit more. You can bend them a little bit, however you want them to sit. And so here's my bag. So it's all done right now and I can decorate it however I want. So I have some other pieces from the paper collection that I pulled to show you what you can do. So I just have some remnants from another project. So I thought something that would be cute would be to make a pocket so I can obviously cut this down to size, but I can make a, a diagonal or a just a stitched pocket on here, or I can, you know, cut it however I choose. So that's one option. You can use border strips to um, make it look like trim. You can put it anywhere you want. And then I thought I would actually cut some of these and make little tiny hanging tags to go on it on, on a string here. So it looks like a little, like a luggage tag. You can also put something on the inside of it. If you want to make it really fancy, you can make a pocket on the inside or you can just leave it plain. So this is the base of the bag and you can decorate it and embellish it as much as you want. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoy making some of your own. Thanks for watching.